Our objectives in this lesson are the following. Solve future value of simple ordinary annuity. Solve present value of simple ordinary annuity. Compute for cash value or cash price. And compute for annuity. Let's have a review of our previous lesson. Annuity may be classified according to the duration, according to the payment interval and interest conversion, and according to the time of payment. We are going to focus our discussion on annuity certain that is ordinary for both simple and general. But for this particular video, we're going to discuss simple, ordinary annuity. Let us define some terms. Payment interval, the time between successive payments. Term of an annuity, small letter t. Time between the first payment and last payment interval. Annuity, capital letter A, the amount of each periodic payment. Future value, capital letter F, sum of future values of all the payments to be made during the entire term of annuity. Present value, capital letter P, sum of present values of all the payments to be made during the entire term of the annuity. Cash value or cash price, down payment if there is any, plus the present value of the installment payments. Future value of simple ordinary annuity. Camille is saving 1,000 pesos at the end of every year to a cooperative that offers 10% compounded annually. How much will her savings be after 5 years? So it says here after 5 years, so this is annuity certain. Camille is saving every year, and the interest is compounded annually. Every year coincides with annually, so this is simple annuity. And Camille is saving every end of the year. So this is an ordinary annuity. To understand better what annuity is, let's have a cash flow. A cash flow is like a time diagram. We'll start at time zero. At this time, this is the present value of our money. Then, the succeeding numbers represent annuity, the equal payments or deposits made periodically. When we say periodic, it means there is equal interval. The last annuity coincides with the future value of our money. In our scenario, the annuity is 1,000 pesos. This is the amount Camille is saving every year for 5 years. We cannot simply add this to determine the future value because there is a compounding interest rate that we have to consider. It says here how much will her savings be after 5 years. So we are looking for the future value. On the last year of deposit, 1,000 pesos will no longer earn interest. So this 1,000 will remain 1,000 pesos. I mentioned earlier that there is a compounding interest rate that we have to consider. It is because annuity is based on compound interest. So we are going to use the formula for future value of compound interest in each interval. And then sum it up to determine the future value of the annuity. Let us recall the formula for the future value of compound interest. And let us start at year 4. So our P, the principal amount, is 1,000 times 1 plus R, our R is 10%, and that is 0.10 raised to 1. Why 1? From 4th year to 5th year is a 1-year interval. So this is 1. And this is equal to 1,100. Next, let's have year 3. So still, the principal amount is 1,000 times the quantity 1 plus 0.10 raised to 2. Y2, 3 to 4, 1 year, 4 to 5, another 1 year. So that is 2 years. And this is equal to 1,210. Next, let's have year 2. And that is 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to 3. 1, 2, 3 years. So we have 3 equals 1,331. Next, let's have the first year. So that would be 1,000 times the quantity 1 plus 0.10 raised to 4. And this is equal to 1,464.10. 
All we have to do is to add all this to determine the future value of the annuity. But do not forget that we still have 1,000 here. Now let's add all this. And this is equal to 6,105 pesos and 10 centavos. This is the future value of our annuity. There is another way of solving the future value of simple ordinary annuity. And that is using this formula. F is the future value. A is the annuity, N is the number of payments, R is the nominal rate of interest, and M is the number of conversions per year. Let us recall the most common number of conversions in a year. If it is annually, M is equal to 1. Semi-annually, M is equal to 2. Quarterly, M is equal to 4. And if it is monthly, M is equal to 12. Let us discuss the same problem, but this time we're going to use the formula. So Camille is saving 1,000 pesos, so this is our annuity, A is 1,000. At the end of every year to a cooperative that offers 10%, so this is our rate, 1, 2, so again R is 0 0.10. Compounded annually, so our M is equal to 1. How much will her, will, so we are looking for the future value. After 5 years, so 5 is our N. Let us substitute these values here, and this will give us 6,105 pesos and 10 centavos. Exactly the same with our previous answer. Let's have another example. Brent wants to know the future value if he continues to deposit 500 pesos every month for 3 years in a bank that gives a 4% interest rate compounded monthly. So it says here for 3 years, so this is annuity certain. Brent is doing the deposit every month, and the interest rate is compounded monthly. The interval of payment coincides with the conversion period, so this is simple annuity. Nothing is mentioned here that Brent is doing the deposit every end of the month. If nothing is mentioned about the time of deposit or payment, then we assume that it is at the end of every payment interval. So this is an ordinary annuity. So Brent wants to know the future value. We're looking for F. Continues to deposit 500 pesos. So this is our A. For 3 years, so our N is 3. 4% interest rate, 4%, 1, 2, R is 0 0.04. Compounded monthly, so our M is equal to 12. Let's have the formula. And let us substitute these values here. And this will give us 19,090 pesos and 78 centavos. This time, let us talk about present value of simple ordinary annuity. How much did Emery borrow if she has to pay 1,000 pesos every year for 5 years if the bank charge a 10% interest rate compounded annually? So it says here for 5 years, so this is annuity certain. And the payment is every year. And the interest is compounded annually. The payment interval coincides with the conversion period, so this is simple annuity. Again, there is nothing mentioned about the time of payment, so we assume that this is an ordinary annuity. We are going to make use of the same cash flow. The only difference is we are now solving for the present value. So the idea is to bring this back to its present value. So we are going to make use of the present value formula in compound interest. Let us start with year 1. So F is equal to 1000 times the quantity 1 plus R. Again, rate is 10%, so 0 0.10. And then T is the number of years from 0. So we have 1000 times the quantity 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to negative 1. From 0 to year 1 is 1 year. And this is equal to 909.09. .09. Next, we have year 2. So this is 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to negative 2, and this is equal to 826.45. Next, year 3, this is 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to negative 3, and this is equal to 751.31. Next, year 4, that is 1,000 times the quantity 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to negative 4, and this is equal to 683.01.
And last one is the year 5. 1,000 times the quantity 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to negative 5. And this is equal to 620.92. Now let us add all this. And this will give us 3,790 pesos and 78 centavos. This is the present value of our annuity. Just like in future value, present value of simple ordinary annuity also has a formula. And we have the same definitions of letters here. Now let us solve the same problem but this time using the formula. So how much did Emery borrow? We're looking for P. If she has to pay 1,000 every year, so our A is 1,000. For 5 years, so our N is 5. Charge 10%, so this is R is 0 0.10. Compounded annually, so our M is 1. Let us substitute these values here, and this will give us 3,790 pesos, 0.79. Exactly the same with our previous answer. Now let us talk about cash value or cash price. Giselle bought a lot and paid 50,000 pesos cash and will pay 10,000 pesos every month for 10 years. If money is 8% compounded monthly, how much is the cash value of the lot? So it says here for 10 years, so this is annuity certain. Payment is done every month and the interest is compounded monthly. So every month coincides with monthly, so this is simple annuity. And we will assume that this is ordinary annuity because nothing is mentioned about the time of payment. So Giselle bought a lot and paid 50,000 cash. So this is the down payment, 50,000. And we'll pay 10,000 every month. So 10,000 is our annuity. For 10 years, so N is 10. 8%, so 8 is 0 0.08. That is our rate. Compounded monthly, so our M is 12. How much is the cash value? We're looking for the cash value and cash value is equal to the down payment plus the present value. So we also have to solve for the present value. So let's recall the formula for P and let us substitute these values here. This will give us 824,214 pesos and 81 centavos. For the cash value, that is equal to down payment plus the value of P. So down payment is 50,000 plus this P, and this will give us 874,214 pesos and 81 centavos. This is the cash value of the lot. This time, let us solve for the value of annuity. Grizel bought a car worth 900,000 pesos. How much is her monthly payment if the loan is payable in 5 years at an interest rate of 9% compounded monthly? So it says here payable in 5 years, so this is annuity certain. Monthly payment and interest is compounded monthly, so this is simple annuity. Nothing is mentioned about the time of payment, so we will assume that payment is done every end of the payment interval. So this is an ordinary annuity. 900,000 here is our P. How much is her monthly payment? So we're looking for the value of A. Payable in 5 years, so our N is 5. Interest rate of 9%, that is 0 0.09. R is 0 0.09. Compounded monthly, so our M is 12. So we are looking for the value of A. Let us recall the formula for P. Since we are looking for the value of A, we're going to divide both sides by this expression. So this will cancel out. And A is equal to P divided by this expression. Now let us substitute our values here. And this will give us 18,682 pesos and 52 centavos. This is the monthly payment of Grizel for 5 years. Now it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer. An automatic washing machine is for sale at 25,000 pesos in cash. So 25,000 is our P. If installment, 2,300 monthly. So our A is 2,300. For one year. So our N is one year. 
it has a 7% interest rate. So 7%, 1, 2. So R is equal to 0 0.07. Compounded monthly. So our M is 12. Help Sigrid determine how much is the difference between buying it in cash and through installment. To answer this, we need to solve for the value of F. So let us recall the formula for F and let us substitute our values here. And this will give us 28,502 pesos and 95 centavos. To answer the question, let us subtract 25,000 here. So there is a difference of 3,502 pesos and 95 centavos. Gets?